In this example, we're going to show you the best way to create efficient vector tracings over the top of an underlying image. So the first thing we're going to do is going to create a new part. And in this case, it's going to be a single sided job. The width is going to be 11. The height is going to be seven inches and the thickness is going to be three quarters of an inch. The Z zero will be set from the material surface and we'll have the X, Y datum set in the center. So with that now, I've got my blank page and I'm ready to read in the image that I'll lay on top. So under file operations, I have the import bitmap. I'm going to select that now and pick my US buckle JPEG. I will open that into the part and it will be located centrally. And one of the first things I need to do is to resize this for this particular job. So with that, I'll come across to the transform objects and the set selected object size. My link X, Y is switched on because I want to enlarge this proportionally in X and Y, and I'll set the width to be 10. So now we can see that the image has been resized and once again, centrally located over the top of the part. Okay, we're now in a position to start thinking about creating the vector tracings over the top. So one of the options I may consider would be under the create objects command, which would be the trace bitmap. If we raise this now, it breaks it up into a series of colors, currently 16, and allows you to pick certain colors and group them together with a view to then possibly previewing the vector tracings that we're going to get created. But of course, in this case, the issue we have is we have a wide variety of browns and golds, so it's not easy to define separate areas that we can then trace bitmaps over. So this is not an option in this particular case. So I'm going to close out that form now and we're going to think of a better way to produce the tracings. Now, if we move to creating a polyline, you can see the image goes faded so we can draw over the top. But in this case, the fading is a little higher than I would like. So one thing I'm going to do is just select the image, right mouse key and go to object properties and just tone down that fading to so reduce the brightness somewhere to around about 35 and that'll be a little easier for me to trace over the top of. Now the next stage is we need to look at that U and the S and the oval and start to build the vectors. So first of all, we'll take the oval and create that first. So going across under create vectors, the draw ellipse command, and I'm just gonna move across now into the center and pick up on this center point. Okay, and just enlarge that. So I'm enlarging in X and in Y until we get the correct value. And in this case, I do want to make a slight modification and increase this to 9.8. And the height is correct and apply and close that down. So now we can see that we've got our vector located correctly. And we want to move through to looking at the U and the S. In this case, the letters don't match any of the standard fonts we have, so we're going to have to create this manually. Okay, so we're going to move across now to the Draw Polyline tool, and we're going to look at a way to quickly create the vectors over the top of these two letters. So let's start with the U first, and I'm going to go across and try and pick out what I think is the high point here. So I'm going to pick this point here first and then move across the left. Notice it's snapping to the snap line. So I know that's going to be orthogonal there. And I'm happy at that height. Come down now. There is a little bit of obviously slight modification that's being made. In other words, to make a better letter than the one we're currently seeing. So I'm just going to come across now, draw down to roughly the top of where the arc is, then across maybe to where the arc ends and across the flat region. Then maybe come up and match across the other side. So we've not going, we're not sketching around the corner, but just at the edges of where the radius would be. And I'll also snap onto here to so make sure the the letters start at the same height. And back up to the top, across to the left, down now, and also snapping across to get that intersection down to the bottom of where the arc starts, to where the arc ends across and I'll snap onto the other side and then back up to the top and just find the intersection and now we've created the basis of the U. Admittedly it doesn't match exactly but we'll come to the modifications later. We're now going to move across and deal with the S so I'm going to make sure that it's based off the low point of the U 
come across now to the right and start with my first left mouse key. I'm going to move up, up, across. And now for this region here, I'm just going to put in two points. So one sort of either side of the corner arc. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and put one there and maybe one there. Also another one at the edge of the radius here, across to the other side to where that point meets. And I'm going to come up vertically. Okay, and across to the side, back down. And I'll pick up that same point at the bottom there. And we're going to come off to the two radiuses, sort of across there and there, across to the far point, back now to the lower part of the S, picking off the top, and pick up the intersections at the bottom. And now we've created the completed piece. So if we can see that now switched off, so I can come up to the layers and switch off the bitmap, you can see that we have the oval border correct, but the U and the S certainly are not correct at the moment. Okay, what we need to do now is to make modifications to our U and our S so it accurately fits the underlying bitmap. So let's deal with the U first. I'm simply gonna select the vector. As you can see, it's dotted lines now, and I'm gonna hit N on the keyboard to put it into node editing mode. So clearly most of it is correct, certainly the upper half, but the lower region we need to address the areas where we should have radiuses. So what I need to do is to come into the vector that needs to be modified and I will change that into a bezier. So if I right mouse key over the vector and select a bezier and as you can see it's created two uh, tangencies and magnitudes there and I'm going to go across to the other vectors and do the same but this time with the keyboard B, B, B and we've now modified all four vectors to be Bezier. Now clearly we don't want to modify the tangency vertically or horizontally but we do need to modify the internal vectors to match those. So I'm going to simply select and as you can see here I have the ability to move that vector around okay which is modifying the tangency through that curve and I'm just going to snap it orthogonally. Okay so I'm going to do the same at the bottom and the same for the internal So now I have the tangencies correct, but clearly you can see the curves do not necessarily match, certainly in the larger arc regions at the bottom. So with that, I now need to modify those curves, but without modifying the tangencies. And you can do that by right mouse clicking on the vector and say, keep Bezier tangency. So if you select that now, when I go and click on the curve, you'll notice it's modifying the magnitudes but not the tangency, so I can move it in or out. So I'm going to just move it out a little bit to match the existing curve and come over to the other side and do the same. And now we've modified those curves to fit the U. So at this point, I feel quite happy with the representation on the U. So moving across to the S, okay, I'm now going to select this. One thing I am going to do now is switch off the Keep Bezier tangency, and we're going to look at modifying some of the points here. Clearly there are areas correct around the square regions, but the most of it needs to be modified. To do that, I would need to change the points from being nodes into splines, which I can do by a right mouse key and smooth point. But since we have so many, there's a far easier way of doing this. So I will simply box pick all my points, and you can see they're all shown in red, and then hold the shift down to deselect the ones that I don't want to modify, which are around the square regions and then just hit S on the keyboard and it will modify all the selected points to be splines. Okay, so with that now, I'm in a position to start modifying the vectors to match the underlying bitmap. So I'm gonna deal firstly with the region at the top here and we're just gonna sort of flex the curves to match and we'll deal with this first and then come down to the bottom and do the same. So we're just gonna get this approximately correct before we start modifying the key main areas in the middle. So with that, I'm just going to now pick up the vector. So I'm actually grabbing the span, and I'm gonna move that out. And you can see I'm able to virtually snap straight out to the side, and I'll do the same at the bottom. Okay, and we'll just modify the vector here a little, and just move that point in. And we'll do the same on this side, just move the vector out. 
Okay, we can clearly see we do need to modify this a little bit more in this region. And at the top, we need to flex it a little bit further out. And as you can see, we started to build this quite quickly into the representation underneath. I'm just moving these points here. I'm going to flex that out to match. And I'm almost pretty happy with that. I probably could make further changes. But if we want to take a look now, let's just simply come out of that and switch off the bitmap. And we've done a pretty good job. Maybe just here I could do a little bit of tweaking again. So I'm going to switch that back on now and come into this particular point and come into the node editing and maybe just slightly tweak this and give it a bit of a better shape through there. So I'm a bit more happy there. And at that point now I can switch off. So at this point, I'm happy to go ahead and save it under File, Save As, and I'm going to save it as US Buckle Vector Drawing.CRV file, and it's ready for use at a later machining point.